So it was at this time in the spring of 1876, General uh, Sherman, Tecumseh Sherman. I don't know how he got this Indian name because he hated Indians and wanted to kill all of us. He told General Sheridan, he said, if you kill the nits, the not, there will be no lies. So they tried to wipe us all out. And so they formed the armies and, and uh, they, uh, at first, uh, they were gonna wipe out the Sioux and the Cheyennes. And they all came here and uh, General Crook had been fighting uh, the Apaches and the Navajos and, uh, and the Yaquis in the south. And the land is, is not like this. You cannot see, if you stand here, there's hills, hills there and, and water everywhere and trees. And in the south, there's nothing like this. It's just flat, so they could see these people. They couldn't hide. So they would chase them until they gave up. And uh, so General Crook became an Indian fighter. They thought he was. So they formed his army to come up here to, to wipe out the Sioux and the Cheyennes. When he came up, all the soldiers that, uh, because of the right of way, they started building forts here with troops. And all the troops congregated congregated on, on uh, Goose Creek uh, at present-day Sheridan, Wyoming. And according to uh, the reports, he had about 1,305 men. And so uh, this man called General Harney went to the agency at Absaraki. They went to the agency at Absaraki and tried to recruit scouts because the General Crook, that's what he used. He used other Indians to chase down uh, here the Apaches and the Navajos and, uh, and uh, Yaquis. He came and tried to recruit uh, scouts, but they refused. They knew that, that they didn't know how to fight the Indians. And uh, so they didn't want to fight with them. But in the meantime, uh, these people were not given their, their rations, the, the, the Crow tribe. And uh, animals were depleted, so they were almost starving. And uh, they relied on the little handouts that were given and they, they were near the forts, near the forts and the agencies. And so he promised to give them uh, rations to their families. And uh, he also promised to pay them if they uh, volunteered to be scouts. And so finally, Chief Plenick, who, according to his, his story, he said, uh, I, I told General Harney and General Terry, he said, we will fight with you if you, uh, if you make uh, uh, Alligator stands up, the war party leader, because he never lost a battle and was a very famous warrior among our people. Alligator stands up was, a, was uh, my great-great-grandfather's brother, and they were tall men. They were about six foot four, six foot five, very powerful, and they were known for their fighting abilities. And, uh, uh, on top of that, uh, Alligator stands up, uh, had a vision, uh, and a bear came to him and promised that he could not be killed in battle, that he could always uh, kill his enemies with a knife. He was not supposed to carry any kind of weapon except a big stick and a knife, and that's how he killed his enemies. And uh, so they met, uh, they, uh, General Harney said that he would make him war party leader. And so uh, 100 and, uh, 176 crows volunteered to fight with him. And it was about April of 1876. And uh, some of the men, uh, uh, the crows went, about, about 25 of them went, went to uh, General Terry. And among General Terry was uh, Curly and uh, fur on his moccasins and goes ahead and white man and white swan and yellow face, have yellow face. And uh, for some reason they, they joined General Custer and, and his troops. And uh, so they were the ones that were involved in the Custer battle. And, uh, and then uh, the 176 men went to join General Crook. And when they came, uh, the, the South Signs were, were all the the different, uh, different armies were coming from Fort, uh, from Bismarck, from Fort uh, 48 and, and all those forts. And they could see their tracks because it was muddy. And they thought that they were running away because they knew that uh, the Sioux had been fighting them. 
And so they were reluctant to, to fight them, but they were hiding. They were hiding and watching what they were going to do. They knew they were on Goose Creek. And they never showed up, and General Crook uh, uh, got, got, was anxious. So he sent his, his, uh, his uh, half-breed scouts to uh, present-day Bozeman, Wyoming, called Fort Parker to see what was happening to the crows. And uh, in the meantime, there was one scout uh, that, that went to where, uh, where the crows were hiding, were, hi were hiding and watching them. Alligator stands up, volunteered to come up with him. And uh, in these army reports, they never mentioned uh, Indian uh, accounts. They never mentioned the Indian accounts, only that, that they showed up. And uh, so when, when uh, Alligator Stands Up came, um, came, came to the troopers here at Goose Creek, the report was that the biggest Indian they ever saw came. And uh, later on, the crows came, 176 crows. And uh, they came uh, like war party. When they returned to war party, they went around firing off their weapons and going around. And, uh, and uh, the troopers enjoyed this. And uh, so the troopers also formed up and started parading. And they carried guidons. And uh, when the crows saw this, they wanted uh, their guidons. So they gave them uh, uh, red trade cloths. And they used them for, for guidons. And, and they started parading like the troopers. And uh, they were having a lot of fun, I guess, uh, when they were there. And then uh, about, about uh, 78 Shoshones showed up with Fort Chief uh, Washiki. Uh, my dad's grandfather, White Blanket, said there were so many of us, we thought that, that the Sioux would see us and run away. And uh, I think that's what uh, General Crook thought too or else they would stay in their village and he would attack and wipe them out. I think that, that's what he, he thought was going to happen. He, di he didn't know that uh, uh, Indians fight on horseback and rush at each other and throw each other down and shoot each other. And it's a big melee when, when, they, when they fight. And uh, there is a painting uh, by Charles M. Russell. It's called When the Blackfeet and Crow Meet. There were men lying on the ground with, and their horses lying on the ground and they're shooting at each other and ri riding, riding around and shooting their arrows. Uh, so that's a good example of how they fought in the old days. And uh, as little boys, they, they were taught that what the war games. They would rush at each other and try to strike each other and throw each other off their horses and run into the other man's horse. And uh, the war horses were taught to be to fight alongside their uh, the the men that were riding them, they trained them to be war horses, uh, like the Lipisaners in in Spain, and so the horses were well trained for warfare. And on the other hand, the troopers used their horses for marching long distances, and for parades. And uh, and they didn't they didn't train them for warfare like like the Indians did. And they also did not listen to the scouts when they tried to tell them something. Uh, General Crook reported, uh, reported that crows are acting a little anxious or ang there's anxiety. And they knew there were a bunch of Sioux here and a bunch of Sioux on that side. And they were trying to warn him, but he didn't listen to them. And uh, he said when we started the march on, on Goose Creek, he said the, the troopers would be ahead would be the first ones, the cavalry would be the first ones, and then behind, the Indians were behind them. And then uh, the, the artillery and the supplies and, and civilian packers, and then the infantry was way behind. And then he said, when we moved, well, we moved all day, and then at night when we, when we camped, when we set up our camps, um, we would eat our meal and go to sleep, and and wake up early in the morning and hear the, 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 the artillery and the infantry were just coming into camp. He said there were so many of us stretched out along Rosebud Creek. And uh, so this happened for two days. And on the, on the third day, they, they, they saw a buffalo herd. The crow saw a buffalo herd at uh, Wolf Mountains. And in warfare, it's a religion to the, the crows. 
the, uh, my people, the Crow tribe of Indians. And uh, so they would have a ceremony before they went out to insure, uh, as insurance that, the, that their uh, uh, war party would be successful. And they did this already, and they saw that, that, uh, uh, that there were a lot of Sioux that were going to be killed. That's why they joined the General Crook. And then when they came on the third day, they found some buffalo. And it's also a gift from, from the creator or the ultimate source of energy as a gift so that the men could eat the buffalo and be strong for the battle. And so they went in and uh, killed some buffalo and here the troopers were anxious. They, they thought they would be noticed by the Sioux and there would mean, be no surprise. But the uh, crows already knew that they were all around here. So they killed the buffalo and ate it. And, and on the third day they moved again. Uh, uh, on Roosevelt Creek, on this side of the Wolf Mountains.